next entrepreneur became the first Irish female CEO of a publicly quoted company on the Irish Stock Exchange. She founded the company in 1989 and it now has revenues of over 300 million across 14 offices in Europe. She is a former Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year and has been an integral part of that alumni, participating in both the judging panel and also the winner alumni retreats and events. At a European level, her company has won two European Business Awards for the company's growth strategy and also has been recognized as Business of the Year. This winner believes in the power of mentoring and supports other female entrepreneurs through the Going for Growth initiative. Please welcome to the stage the Group Chief Executive of CPL Resources PLC, Anne Herity. Good evening, it's a pleasure to be here with you this evening. And I'm delighted to be part of celebrating the terrific women who are being honored here. I have to say, I loved this event last year and I met so many fantastic people. It's great to be involved with WXN, it's an excellent organization and I have to say, well done to Pamela and her team and thank you for such a fantastic evening. It's hard to believe that it's been 40 years since the passing of our first equality legislation. And I see the Irish Times are running a series this week on women in the workplace to mark the occasion. Well, I'm very encouraged that we've come a long way, but I'm sure you'll all agree that there's still a little bit more to do. I left secondary school in 1978, and for my class of 50 girls, only three of us went to university. And my daughter Amy is com completing her leaving cert this year and of, in an all-girls school, and over 95% of her class will go on to third level. So in the last 40 years, women have made great progress, both in terms of education and the workplace. But I think it's really up to us here now to drive the further changes that are needed so that the skills of all women and their talents can be fully utilized and rewarded. So here we are at WXN 2013, and I've been asked to share a few words with you. And when Pamela asked me first, I thought, in the name of God, what am I going to say to these very successful women? You certainly don't need any advice from me anyway, and that's for sure. But I thought what maybe I could do was share with you a little bit about my story, some of the lessons I've learned along the way, and I suppose what sustained me and kept me going. Now, everyone in this room has their own ambitions, and everyone in this room has their own definition of success. For me, success is defined by doing a job I absolutely love, but by balancing that with strong and loving relationships in my wider life. I think so, success, like so much in life, cannot be easily measured. For some, it might be your pay scale, your position on the career ladder, or indeed the height of your heels. It's a very individual thing. But I think most heads will nod when I say to you that I regard success as having the courage to be yourself, to trust in your own instincts, to understand and play to your own unique strengths, and to have the courage to make your own choices. You know, when I think back over any success that I've enjoyed and the lessons I learned, there are two sort of recurring themes that stand out for me all the time. And they are choices and empowerment. And I'd like to maybe talk to you first of all about empowerment. I graduated in 1984 from UCD with a um, degree in maths and economics. <laughs> and you might be surprised to know that I didn't have a master plan. To be honest, I didn't have a clue about what I wanted to do. I was a pretty confused young one. But what I did know with the real enthusiasm of youth was that I wasn't ready for some tedious, boring office job. So I took the scenic route. I worked in bars and nightclubs and in fact, I pretty much had a great time doing random jobs to support myself. But you know, time was drifting by, and suddenly I was three years out of college. My friends were all doing really well, they were advancing in their careers, and I started to realise that I was getting left behind. I was really stuck, and I knew I needed to get a proper job, and I needed to get started on the career ladder. Now, unfortunately for me, the corporate world wasn't wait waiting for me with bated breath to wake up. 
So I searched really hard for jobs, loads of applications, but no success. And I have to say, it was really, really tough. I know some people look on this time in my life as a failure and a complete waste of time. But you know, when I think about what I learned, I realized that this was one of the key foundation setting periods of my life. And I have to bring myself back and think about this. Because my daughter, as I said to you earlier, my daughter Amy is doing her leaving cert at the moment. And I'm acutely aware of the pressure that both children and their parents put themselves under. We expect everything to go in a straight line. You know, in Dublin it's particularly hard. It's to get into the right primary school, then it's get into the right secondary school, then we've get, got to get into the right university, and finally we have to get into the right firm. But you know, when I look back on my situation, and particularly at the start of my career, it was definitely the detours and the cul-de-sacs that taught me the most. I think they're really what built my character and resilience. Now, you know, having said all that, what sustained me during this time was the support of close family, and particularly my mother. Of course, she wasn't happy with me drifting, and I know for sure that she, now that she really worried about me. But nevertheless, my mother was clear with me. She was clear that it was my life and my journey, and the mistakes were mine to make, but they were mine to sort out. Where she was really powerful, though, was that she believed in me, and I knew it. Mind you, I often say she believed in me so much that she never gave me a penny. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew better than to ask, I can tell you. But rather, she trusted in me to make my own choices and believed in me to make the best of my life. And that, to me, is the very definition of empowerment. It's no coincidence, then, that empowerment is one of the core values of CPL. I believe that deep down, empowerment is about connecting to your own innate, infinite power and energy. It's about being the best every day for the sheer personal challenge and joy of doing it. You know, one of the things I have noticed is that the people who really make it in life are not afraid of failure. They are those who try hardest to be the best that they possibly can be, just for the delight and personal satisfaction of rising above a challenge. Failure, after all, is a myth. There is no such thing. I mean, no such thing. And Mary Pickford, the actress from the silent movie era, said it so well. Failure is not the falling down. Failure is the staying down. What I took from these early experiences was the realization that success and failure are two sides of the same coin. Success sets the next challenge. And failure, well, failure also sets the next challenge. They are both just experiences. But they are not, nor can they ever be, a measure of a person's true worth and capability. So what I would say to you is, make empowerment part of your daily life, believing in yourself, and nothing is impossible. Now, the second theme that keeps cropping up for me is choices. And you know, I heard a great phrase about choices from a very unlikely source. And that phrase is, it's not our abilities that show what we truly are. It is our choices. And my source of this profound piece of wisdom, well, none other than the wonderful Dumbledore from the Harry Potter stories. It is not our abilities that show what we truly are. It is our choices. Think about that. It is not our abilities that define us. It is our choices. And thank you to a fabulous woman, J.K. Rowling, for that lovely phrase. Now, there's no easy formula for making the right choices, and in fact, I've made lots of wrong ones, I can tell you. But making the choice and owning the consequence is really important to me. It really is. So what are the life-changing choices that I've made? Well, I suppose the most important one was my husband, Paul. Paul is my partner at work and at home and he provides me with a huge amount of support to do my job in a very competitive and demanding environment. 
I know some of you here also will know the pressure and the challenges of running a business or managing a career and bringing up children. I am really fortunate that Paul is a true partner in both these areas of my life. Another choice that it has, has had a huge impact on me is my team. I suppose I'd be a real believer that we achieve almost nothing alone. I don't know, did your ever, mother ever say to you like mine did, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are? <laughs> well, it's a bit the same in business. You are who you recruit. Your team, the energy, the creativity, the spirit, it's the one resource your competitors cannot replicate. And it's maybe the only one. Now, we've had some great times in CPL, but we've had some pretty tough times as well. And the one thing that I have learned is that it actually doesn't matter what business you're in. It doesn't matter what part of the business cycle you're in. What matters most are the people who are part of your team and the people with the will and the attitude to succeed. Now, probably the choice that had the biggest impact was the choice to set up my own company. And really, essentially, I set up CPL as a result of a conversation that I had with Paul about choices. So let me briefly explain. In 1989, I was working in recruitment with a company here in Dublin, and all was going well, and I actually loved it. Then we got a new manager, and the company changed direction. Now, I wanted to be the best recruiter that I possibly could be. I wanted to be a trusted advisor to both my clients and my candidates. And I believed the only way to do this was to specialise and build a really deep knowledge of the sector in which I was working. And my preferred sector was the technology sector. My manager, however, had a different strategy. And I found myself one day I could be recruiting an analyst, the next day an accountant, and the following day it might be a secretary. And I just had this feeling that I really wasn't doing a great job or adding real value for any one of them. So one evening, I was vociferously complaining to Paul. I mean, some people might even say I was moaning, but anyway, <laughs> about all of this. And eventually, of course, he turns around to me and he says, Anne, you have a couple of choices here. Most of them are good, but one of them is not. And here are your choices. You can focus on the good things in work and enjoy it and forget about the bad things. Or... You can try and change things for the better. Why don't you go to your boss and try and inf influence him? Tell him the great value you'll create for the team if he lets you do it your way. And you know, if neither of those two work, you can vote with your feet and go and find yourself another job or maybe set up on your own. Now he said, these are all good choices, but one of them is not. And that choice is the choice to come home here moaning and complaining to me every <laughs> evening and doing nothing about it. Well, I have to say, the words of Pam Ayres when she was talking about husbands came to mind. And she said, I often wonder what it must be like to be so strong, infallible, articulate, self-confident, and wrong. <laughs> Well, I'm married to Paul for 20 years, and I know the secret of a good marriage is to do everything he tells me. So, on this occasion, Paul was right, and I took his advice. And two months later, Computer Placement was born as a boutique rec recruitment company specialising in the technology sector. So I suppose that takes me nicely on to the CPL story. So here we were at the end of 1989. Me, with a desk and a phone and a copy of the Golden Pages and a massive passion to be the best recruiter that I possibly could be. Now, in our first year of operation, we made a profit of 4,000 and I was delighted. Ten years later, we listed on the Irish and London stock exchanges. And now, after 24 years in business, we work for 1,500 clients in nine countries. We put over 22,000 people to work last year on our client sites and we placed almost 6,000 people in permanent jobs. Now, as I said earlier, it wasn't a simple straight line. We started in really difficult times in the early 90s. There was 15% unemployment, and in a lot of ways, it wasn't that different to the way it is today. 
Just after our IPO then, of course, we had the dot-com crash, and here we were, a specialist technology recruitment company in a sector that was literally on its knees. It was at this juncture that my mother offered a piece of that Irish mammy advice. Well, now, you did put all your eggs in one basket, dear, didn't you? What did you think was going to happen? Mm. So myself and the team got together and we worked out a strategy about how we were going to build a more resilient business. We determined that our business would be balanced. We'd have no over-reliance on any one sector, on any single client, on any single geography, or any one service. And we slowly but surely built back up the business until 2008. And we all know what happened then. <laughs> it just seemed like the whole world was collapsing. You couldn't throw worse at a recruitment company than what we got. Do you know, we took our hits, and thankfully we've built back up again. I believe CPL is a stronger than ever business now, and as well as that, we now have added a full outsourcing business, so we have an outsourcing and a recruitment business. So no, it definitely hasn't been a straight line. I've had to make some tough choices. You know, thankfully most were in the right direction. I'm not afraid to tell you either that I've made some pretty poor choices, and there are definitely a few I'd like to consider, or I'd like to reconsider. <laughs> But when that happens, I stop, I breathe, and fortunately I realise that the most important thing is that I have learned something from all the choices that I've made. So when I'm talking about, so when I'm talking about empowerment and choices, there are no silver bullets, no shortcuts, no Dr. Phil, seven things that are going to transform your life, your job, your relationship, your waistline. It's just empowerment and choices. Now, I'm well aware how fortunate I am to be standing here this evening in such wonderful company. I'd like to thank my team, I'd like to thank my family, Paul, Amy and Peter, my CPL team of exceptionally talented, committed and supportive people. And last but definitely not least, I'd like to thank our customers who have stood by us through thick and thin we really appreciate your business, we never take it for granted, and we work really hard to earn your loyalty. And I just want to thank you most sincerely. Now I'd like to finish with a little story that I love, and it's about Nicola Paganini, the great violinist. He was about to perform before a packed opera house, and he walked onto stage, and suddenly he realised that he'd taken the wrong violin with him. Realising that he had no other choice, he began to play and he poured his heart and soul into the performance. The audience gave him a standing ovation and everyone agreed that it was the performance of a lifetime. That night Paganini was interviewed and he said, Today I learned a most important lesson of my career. Before today, I thought the music was in the violin. Today I learned the music is in me and it's in you. Thank you very much.